So now for Jawan in his fifth year, a magical tournament run could be maybe a little far-fetched, but that's why we play the games, and that's why they're here in Minneapolis. They win the tap, and we're underway in the second of our doubleheader, day one at the Big Ten Tournament here at Target Center. Michigan's going to have to handle Penn State's pressure. They, they turned the basketball over 19 times in that game back in January. McDaniel comes up short. He shot it exceptionally well in the season-ending loss to Nebraska. Five of seven from three. He came out firing, making his first five for the four. That matchup with Ace Baldwin is going to be a big-time one. Baldwin, the defensive player of the year in the league, third team all Big Ten, and those two will be matched up all night long. Kern. Working on Williams on the back down with 10 to shoot. Kick it, Hicks, Cheddar with a nice job of fanning out. Now five to shoot. Hicks is going to do it himself. Step back, mid-range, tough run short. A good defense on the basketball. Cheddar moving his feet. McDaniel showing some help, and Michigan getting an early stop. McDaniel averaging 16.6 points per game this season, 4.6 assists, and a travel is going to be called against Burnett, a turnover for the Wolverines. They're going to need more from Namari Burnett. Three straight games and single digits for him. He drags that pivot foot there on the jab, but just two of his last 15 from three. And we need him to make some shots and certainly be a playmaker alongside McDaniel. Penn State coming off a Big Ten title game appearance last year. Michael Shrewsbury leading that team. Now Mike Rhodes looking to find some of that magic himself. Taking it from the first round all the way to the last round. Done. Dumped down. Wahab couldn't handle it. And Michigan will take it right back. Williams hits the deck. And here comes McDaniel. Up ahead for Cheddar. He is a marksman. And an ill-advised pass. Wahab gets it right back. It's one of those where it was there, but Cheddar shot fakes and then throws it much too late. Baldwin, he play early. Across the sauce and the bucket. Here's what Nick Kern has just been living off of. Last five games, 57% from two. Nate Baldwin have great chemistry. And right there, just blowing by his defender. Burnett, the response. It's true. A three. We just talked the numbers. He needed that one to go down in the worst way. Michigan taking that Penn State pressure and breaking it to score. Kicks around the horn. Here's Kern. Average 8.8 points per game this year in his junior season. Stop in the lane. Slippery. Comes up short. They're going to test Cheddar. And they're going to make him guard. Oh, bounce pass ahead. Cheddar traveled. McDaniel put it on a rope. And Cheddar just took one too many steps. I like the rim run. And the look by McDaniel. Fantastic with this bounce pass. One-handed. There you see three steps. And... Buckets coming off the board. It's not like the gather dribble. You don't get that grace movement on the pass. Baldwin at the controls as he has been most of the year. Six assists per game. One of the best marks in the conference. Wahab is fouled and he'll shoot two. But Cheddar can't just leave the ball like that. You've got Terrace Reed trying to recover off the ball screen. And you're not running away from the rim until Terrace Reed has squared that ball up. Guys, Here you're going to see the double team is on, and then Chen's trying to get back out, but there's nobody to guard Kudus Wahab from getting to the basket. Really strong finish to the season. You see the rebounding numbers really stand out for Wahab. Now his third stop, technically four different eras of his college career. Georgetown to Maryland, back to Georgetown, now at Penn State. But you see, last five games, 14 and a half per game on the season, 9.8. 19 and 15 the win over Maryland to finish the regular season. He, he was here in the wrong era the yeah. first time in the Big Ten, where you're like, all right, I've got Kofi Coburn, I've got Zach Key, I've got Trey Young Williams, I've got Trace Jackson Davis, and the list just went on and on and on of really good bigs. Cliff Amore, and now you look at some of those bigs have thinned out. It's been more of a guards league, I would say, this year. And he has had a nice season. I will mention selection by the coaches, and you mentioned what he's done the last five. Reed and it Williams is bumped by Kern. So Kern picks it up on the outside. It's Dunn, Kern, Hicks, Baldwin staying out there, and Demetrius Lilly getting some early run. 6'10, 245, sophomore from Philly. Mike Rhodes mentioned year one for Rhodes here at this program, coming over from VCU, a ton of success. Around the horn for Cheddar. From the inside, Reed. He's got the bigger body on Lily. He wants to use the matchup. Reed, Lily in the sandbox, comes up short. Turnout transition. 
Awkward delivery, gets it back from Lilly. 20 on the shot clock. Lilly inside, hooks it well short. Yeah, Lilly hasn't played in seven of the last nine games, so a little surprising to see him here so early. Trying to maybe match the size of Terrence Reed at 6'10, 265. Instead, it's Cheddar on the back down, and he's blocked from behind. DeMarco Dunn tracked it. Baldwin in transition. Cross, drive, deuce. That's a great hesitation there. I think Ace Baldwin just pulling this back out, but he's just sizing this up. And then on the other end, how about Zach Hicks matching the physicality of Cheddar? And that allowed that help defender to come in and get the ball. And entry two, around back to McDaniel. See if they can get him going. 17 points to pace the way against Nebraska. It was a close game for most of the way until Nebraska pulled away late. Burnett misfired from the corner. Reed offensive rebound, second chance. Williams nearly shuffled the feet. Into the paint, fades, and does not get the roll. Slow start offensively for both these teams. Oh, Baldwin has it on a string. Hicks, bodied by Cheddar, Dunn, inside, blocked inside. Burnett, nice job to use the body, it's going the other way. Defense paramount so far to start the second of our doubleheader. Well, how about Ace Baldwin, third team, all Big Ten on the season. He's slowing it up, he's shot of a cannon, getting downhill and using that left and finishing over the top. Had a great team last year. They're going to come back with this great energy, but you lose your coach. You lose literally at this point now the entire roster from yeah, a year ago. Demetrius Lilly, the, the one guy that was on the team that still is. And Mike Rhodes had to start from scratch. And honestly, he's he was very honest heading into this game about how much appreciation he has for all the guys that came along because he felt like a lot of them, you know, aside from the guys who came with him from VCU, Kern and Baldwin, a lot of them had to take the chance of yeah. No doubt. And, and those are the guys that are set your foundation, building your culture, and, and, and that's not an easy thing to do, especially when Mike Rhodes' system is, is not for everybody. You know, you're, you're going to pressure, you're, you're going to go full speed for 40 minutes, and you get you get guys and find guys that can do that as we see just McDaniel a little bit out of control there DeMarco Dunn taking the charge But these are gonna be the guys that when Penn State looks back in four or five years man It, it all started with this group Michigan already with four turnovers trail by just two Penn State has struggled to score but Lilly gets an easy one and the foul Boy, I don't think Michigan was totally aware as, as to whether they were in man-to-man -man or 2-3 zone right there. They like to go zone and then match up, and you just got Lilly cutting right through the middle. Nobody picks him up, and the interior passing on display there by the Nittany Lions. So Lilly hits the free throw line you mentioned. Definitely has had limited role for most of the season. Three points, nearly three rebounds per game in that limited action, but he completes on the three-point play. Wahab will come back in. So Wahab back on the floor. Jamil Brown is out there for the first time. Puff Johnson, as well as Ace Baldwin, and Zach Hicks. Six straight points for Penn State to take a five-point lead. I'm curious, though, to see if Puff Johnson can build on what he's done the last two games. He has made shots and gotten to the rim and looked like a different player here. Trey Jackson in there for Michigan. Here's McDaniel at the controls. Jackson around the horn. Burnett inside. Reed for two. That's a great pass right there. Play by Namari Burnett. That ball swings. You get the baseline drive, and he just drops that off to Terrace Reed beautifully. You can always tell the former players that become coaches by the way that they stand on the sideline when their team is defending. <laughs> Juwan Howard is essentially in a defensive stance while his team is on this end of the floor. Johnson enters, Wahab using his body, forced one, nice defense by Reed. McDaniel the other way, high volume score. He's not taking a whole bunch of shots yet. Half the shot clock gone, splits the two, kick out, a little awry, track down, Williams, extra, Burnett, forces, had it knocked away by Wahab. Reed recovers for the shoot. McDaniel fires. Too strong. I don't get anything there, but I do like the aggressiveness of Namara Burnett to, to take Penn State's temperature at the rim. He's been aggressive looking to get in there. Hicks off the heel. Rebound Wahab. 
Second chance now for Penn State. Brown a little bit too far in front. That's a jump ball. It'll stay with Penn State. Just a bit of a, a lazy pass there from Kudus Wahab. Good offensive rebound, but that pass is on target. And I'm thinking Jamil Brown is getting a shot up there. Well, you talked about who wants to be here, and we saw that in the first game. Maryland came out, and they, they clearly did. They They're punched really Rutgers in the mouth. Unquestioned from tip-off. So far, these two teams are putting together a nice fight. They're going to well in there for Michigan. They're going with this two-point guard lineup since McDaniel's full reinstatement. And it has had some benefits having the Wellen and McDaniel on the floor. That's a double dribble called against Nick Kern. And we've seen Michigan string together some solid first halves. It's, it's been a full 40 minutes that, that's really eluded them. But so far, so good. I mean, they, they've come out here, they've competed. The last three games, they've, they've lost by an average margin of 22 points. But that has not stopped them tonight from coming out here and, and playing hard for the first seven minutes of the game. Michigan is 2-18, and 18, dating back to December 16th. And that is going the other way on a turnover. Another one, fifth of this first seven minutes. Good active hands there by Jamil Brown. But I think Doug McDaniel surprised Jalen Llewellyn. He, he was really guarded, but that high trap is affecting McDaniel. Clearly, Penn State is going to put pressure on him when he comes off the ball screen. Baldwin off the Wahab screen. Get it inside of the roll. Big man, and he can't finish. Nice shot. A little tentative tonight. Yeah. Jackson up ahead. Johnson steps up. Jackson the back down. Using the length. Fades. Can't hit. Michigan 8-23 as mentioned. The 23 losses. A school record in that category. It broke John Beeline's first year as head coach. He went 10-22 and as Baldwin comes up too strong. And the whistle. A foul in transition going against Puff Johnson. Oh, you mentioned how well Kudus Wahab has played these last five games. Here he's rolling to the rim. Good help by Trey Jackson of just being where he's supposed to be. Gives Terrace Reed just enough time to get back in the play, but I never felt that Kudus Wahab was comfortable after he caught that pass to go make his move. These are two teams that certainly can score the basketball. Times defense has been a problem certainly for Michigan this year as Jackson can't finish inside. Cheddar hits the deck, gets the ball first, and earns his team nearly a second chance opportunity before it's taken right back by Penn State. A great effort there by Puff Johnson. Active hands, and he kept that play alive. Kern hands it. Ball to win cross. A couple of times on McDaniel. Bounce it, Johnson attacks, can't finish. And Chase Howard in there will grab the board. Michigan looking to run, McDaniel leave it, Llewellyn pump, drive, Llewellyn up and up with a nice finish. In transition, Michigan finding something there off the bounce, and maybe we've escaped the offensive desert that has been the last three minutes of play. Wahab is fouled. It's fine by Baldwin on the shovel pass. Leads us to a to you physically and what that does to you mentally. And he has toughed it out. He's done everything Jawan Howard has asked him to do. When, when Doug McDaniel was not playing, man, he'd play 31 minutes. He'd be aggressive offensively. He had to break pressure. And, and then when, when Doug would play in the home games, he'd see his role decrease. I'm just glad he's healthy. I'm glad he's out here. He's a great kid. And, and certainly he deserves to finish his season playing well. Wahab misses the second, so that was a lay Leo O'Boyle's first appearance of the night. Six turnovers on 14 possessions already for Michigan. Well in a steady hand at that point guard spot. Cheddar, wide open for three. Oh, Burnett skies, he can't finish. Gets a right back, third chance. A kick out. Penn State fortunate because Cheddar really can shoot it. How about Burnett's effort on the offensive board just flying in? Screen from Cheddar. Llewellyn leaves it. Oh, that is a bone crushing screen. Jace Howard, he gets bumped by Kern and Baldwin feeling the effects. Well, Jace Howard found the body. <laughs> he just totally lays out Ace Baldwin here. Mm. I assume that they're, they're getting him for, for maybe not giving him space. I, yeah, he's moving into the screen. He doesn't give 
Baldwin kind of that step to, to react and man, he, he got his money's worth there. Let's check in with Zora. Well, let's go over those last huddles, Noah and Robbie. It, for Penn State, it was all about, all about guarding the ball. So you could say that Ace Baldwin Jr. did that right there. Sacrifice one, took one to the body. For Michigan, it was an execution huddle. Jawan Howard used most of his time calling up plays, going over sets, making sure the guys know what positions they're supposed to be in. Well, that's good execution on the other side, Zora. Baldwin looks like he's just fine after taking the big time spring from Howard. Ball is always the best medicine. You're feeling it, and then it's in your hands, and you see something you like, he gets chatter in that matchup off the ball screen, and it's Baldwin well again. <laughs> Approaching the midway point of this first half, Penn State only on to a slim advantage. Llewellyn with six, step into the three, no. Rebound, Kern got a hand on it. Boy, oh boy, went down hard. Baldwin finds the trailing Hicks. Oh, Boyle back in the play. Baldwin, the shake and bake. Oh, blocked inside. He went right at Howard. That's probably the best case scenario for Penn State there because Baldwin had lost his footing, and that was going to be a wild shot attempt. Llewellyn and Jackson will sit for Michigan. And O'Boyle, after taking the hit, or taking the spill at least, will sit. Jace Howard hasn't played a ton of games this year, mostly due to injury. As a turnover on the other side this time. Meanwhile, Raquandis Mitchell, who got big minutes the other day, is in there and he comes up with a steal. Up ahead, here's Kern. Lilly was running with him, but Kern takes it himself. And that's going to be a blocking foul. Cheddar was trying to get in position to take the charge. He took the contact, but also pick up the personal, his second. Noah, Ace Baldwin, obviously an elite defender, but I think he's even better when he's behind the play. Look at the way he just runs this down. Back taps that, and now Penn State able to get out and transition. But with most players, you're by them, and you're thinking, man, I I'm in good shape. I have beat my defender. And Baldwin, he is coming after you, and that was quite the effort there. So it's Kern to the free throw line after taking the contact. Ace Baldwin, fourth in the country in total steals at 84. Third team all Big Ten in, in terms of his overall play. And the Big Ten player, defensive player of the year. He was also the A-10 defensive player of the year last year. He's one of the best perimeter defenders in the entire country at six foot 190. It's really the effort no, to your point. And he does it on the ball, off the ball, at the back of the press, at the front of the press. He, he just is so tenacious. Never quits on a play. Like I said before, when he's behind you, that's when he's at his most dangerous. For more on Ace, let's get some, some perspective on what makes him so impressive. Zora, what do you got? Guys, Baldwin Jr. told me his approach to defense starts during warm-ups. While everybody is worried about layup lines, he is looking for intel. Baldwin Jr. told me he can tell if someone is ready to play or not. By the way that they're shooting before tip from there, he's monitoring everything. Demeanor, eyes, body movement. He said it is all about disruption. And, and that's interesting because you really get into the mindset of what makes someone a great defender is Burnett catches in on the second chance opportunity. I, I, it's the Dylan Brooks approach without the Dylan Brooks bravado, so to speak. <laughs> the mentality is yeah. minus the actions. But it clearly yields results, as we've seen now his entire career. And Kern, just careless with the basketball, will get it back to Michigan. And now Dunn will check in for him. Both these, th these teams have something to clean up early. Michigan with eight turnovers, and Penn State has already given up six offensive rebounds. It's been an area that they've struggled in all year long. 314th in defensive rebound percentage. But Michigan has found some second-chance opportunities, and that's paid off for the Wolverines. 15 to shoot, in for Reed. Working on Lilly. Jenny likes the matchup. Double come from Baldwin. And Reed can't get the bounce. Penn State shooting just 29%, Michigan at 22%. Bobbing inside, nobody home. It was tipped by Burnett, so it'll stay with the Nittany Lions. Reed, Howard, Burnett, McDaniel, and Williams against Mitchell, Dunn, Baldwin, Lilly, and Hicks. Eight and fifth denial by McDaniel there. Just blew up that play to Ace Baldwin. Here is Baldwin for three. 
Followed it, tipped it out. Hicks, same spot. Different result. Bottom from the outside. What a big shot for him. Just two of his last 16 from three. Had that stretch in February where he was unconscious. He's really struggled with his offense over the last three games, and that's a big one for his confidence. McDaniel, leave it. Burnett already knocked down a three. Spins away from Baldwin. Just that defense is so impressive. And he forced the miss. And, and most players, when you're physical like Burnett was there with Baldwin, they're, they're gonna give you some space. And Ings Baldwin didn't move one bit. Hicks, attack mode. Burnett cuts him off. Hicks fades short. And Reed just plucks it away from McDaniel. He's fouled nearly 90 feet away from the basket. Timeout on the floor with 7.07 to play in this first half. Penn State extending to a six-point cushion. And the second chance just past the midway point in this first half. Meanwhile, Penn State has cashed in 10 points off turnovers, but they've turned it over four times themselves. Only five field goals made, and the second chance opportunities piling up on both sides. Offense has been in a premium. These two teams, three of their last 17 from the field. Kind of the theme in the first game tonight as well. <laughs> it has been, shall we call it, old school Big Ten yeah. basketball. Yes, the grind has been on. But Daniel on Baldwin, this was the matchup we were looking forward to here tonight. Baldwin so far has done his job. Leave it, Williams on Dunn. 12 to shoot for Burnett. Dumped down. Reed. Oh, the spin cycle. He slams. Cannon in the foul. Now you see me. Now you don't. Harris Reed has a bunch of ability, and there the agility is on display. They're throwing it inside. He takes it to the middle. The footwork there to take him back. Baseline gets some contact. I have to think that for Michigan's program, even though this is a lost season, Terrace Reed is the piece that you're certainly going to look to build around going to next year. He's taking clear steps forward, nine points and seven rebounds per game, not to mention 1.5 blocks. And Terrace Reed Jr., standing 6'10, 265, his body keeps getting to be in better shape. You can just see the flashes of brilliance. Puff Johnson is fouled on the way up, and he will. Oh, did they count that bucket? Take a look here. No, I mean, it's, it's going to be two shots. But I love the fact that Puff Johnson, Penn State's throwing it up to him to, to beat this pressure. And he wasn't thinking settling for a jumper. He, he's thinking, I've got 6'10, 265 closing out to me. And I'm going to drive this and put pressure on the Michigan defense. Mentioned some of the performances of late. Most recently, game against Maryland on Sunday for Puff, 13 points. Five rebounds, but four of seven from the floor. We know that he can shoot the ball just like his brother. We know that the length is there and the intangibles are there. The question has always been about consistency, especially through this season. And if he can find it at this point, there's obviously a lot that you can still do in terms of damage in the Big Ten tournament. Just get it across before the 10. Now here's McDaniel at the controls. Daniel 0 for 3 to start this game. Got the switch with Hicks. Look at how aggressive and up Penn State. They are making Doug McDaniel give the ball up and living on the backside with whatever they get. Burnett buries his third three. It's well done by McDaniel to get that ball out. You've got two guarding it. Extra pass to the corner. Good offense from Michigan. Back to a two-point game. Defensive slugfest. Penn State 2 for the last 10. Wahab on Reed. He's going to pull and hit. Look at Wahab showing the range off. And I know he can make a 15-footer, but I don't think I've seen him take one off the bounce this year. That was something that Mike Rhodes really was thoroughly impressed by with Wahab. As Williams can't hit his three. Rebound Howard guided back to Williams. And the second chance falls, splashes it home in the mid-range. He's been there for Michigan. They have been active on the offensive glass. Not a great offensive rebound team on the season, but with some of Penn State's shortcomings there, they've been able to take advantage of it. That one too strong for Hicks. McDaniel. What Mike Rhodes was saying about Wahab is he's so impressed. And it was a good example for everybody is that he's continued to get better even though he's been in college as long as he has. It shows that anybody can 
always work on their game, can find new wrinkles, as we just saw with the jumper, and really with the way he's played down the stretch this season, as McDaniel turns it over once again for Michigan. But Wahab has been a, a sparkling example of what he believes for the future of his program and developing players at all levels. Under five to play in this first half. Penn State, six for 19, Michigan, seven for 24. Ball and confusion on the Penn State end of, for the offense right now. It's just not cohesive. Michigan has numbers if they hurry. Bounce it. Williams attacks and is going to draw the contact. It'll be a blocking foul on Dunn. His second. Well, Penn State out of sorts uh, with their half court offense. And with that, the new rule of you've got to be set by the time that that plant foot is going up. It's close right there. It's so much harder this season to take charges on those types of plays. Williams will go to the line where he shoots 77%. 14 points in their season finale. From the author of Big Little Lies and Nine Perfect Strangers comes the new Peacock original, Apples Never Fall. Annette Benning. Sam Neill, Jake Lacey, Allison Bree. They all star in the new original series, which explores marriage, sibling bonds, and one family's darkest secrets. Apples Never Fall, streaming March 14th, only on Peacock. As Williams ties the game, first tie since 3-3 in the early going of this first half. You talked about it, Michigan has played well in first halves for most of this season. They've kept games close. We'll see if they can put together the full 40. Think about the game we saw at Michigan State. Yes. Where they should have probably should have been up more. But then the second half, the wheels just totally fell off. Hicks sets the feet and throws the three. He's got a pretty looking jumper there. Well, we talked about some of his struggles here to finish the season, but Jack Hicks a guy that his shot making has really helped this ball club. McDaniel had it knocked out of bounds. 3.51 to play in this first half, and we've got a back and forth affair. You have to understand where Zach Hicks is at all times because he could burn you from the perimeter. Terrence Williams a little bit late. That's a quick turnaround for, <laughs> yeah. for Maryland and for Rutgers. Obviously, Maryland ends up winning it, but to play at 2.30 tomorrow, 30 Eastern, which is actually one, or yes, one third. I lose track of what <laughs> we are in time central time zone. One thirty yes. central. <laughs> that's a that's a quick turnaround. It, it is, and you know this is why you plan those MTEs back in November because you're playing you know back to back days or you're playing a couple games in, in three or four days. That's where you can kind of get that preparation. And boy, Doug McDaniel, it's been rough sledding here. 0 for five from the field, and that was not close. Well, here's what we saw in the first of our doubleheader here on Peacock. Maryland really took control of this game in the opening minutes. They started up 11 nothing, a near triple-double for Jameer Young with 11 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. And it was the Terrapins with a 65-51 victory. Now, one of these teams trying to do the same in tonight's nightcap. Wahab, the post-touch, floats it up and banks it home. Does a good job of using those elbows for leverage. He gets low and leverages Terrace Reed, finds his way across the entire lane to get to his left hand. Under three to play in this first half. McDaniel had it knocked away, turns it over again. A foul is going to go against Doug, and that's going to be a one and one for Penn State. If Doug McDaniel's not playing well. I just don't know how Michigan's offense is going to create. Here's Kudus Wahab going to work. Sometimes he wants to get to his right hand. But they're showing off the, the off left. Pretty well done. And here you'll see just that elbow it, it, that finds the back of Terrace Reed and allows him to get to that. McDaniel sits Llewellyn back in. Johnson to the free throw line for the one and one, where he shoots it at 74%. Penn State this year. And you talk about nine conference wins, just the eighth time in 32 years in the Big Ten that this program's won nine or more games in conference. And if they win tonight, it would be their fourth straight year with a Big Ten tournament win. It's real progress, even with now a first-year head coach, to have that continued feel of momentum. And now a 7-0 run to take a seven-point lead. 
dangerous capability by the Weller. And a foul away from the ball on a trip. It was going to be Baldwin. I'm curious to see how long McDaniel will sit over there. He hasn't made a shot. He's over five. He's got four turnovers. But Michigan, they just need his playmaking. So you have to think that I doubt he'll sit the rest of the 237 in this first half. Burnett's been the leading scorer. Comes up short. There's two schools of thought. The one is Doug McDaniel is playing incredibly poorly and he can't get any offense. Well, the other one, he does have two fouls, so yes. I guess Juwan Howard is managing that, but they're going to need more from him. And I guess as long as this game is closed, he'll stay over there. And that's exactly what I was about to say right before Hicks knocks down another three. Ten straight points for Penn State. Timeout, Juwan Howard. 2.13 to play. Nittany Lions starting to point up. So McDaniel will stay on the bench. You see three consecutive makes after the sluggish start for Penn State. They're up to 39% Michigan, shooting 27% from the floor. Burnett, Llewellyn, Williams, Cheddar, and Reed. And a foul is going to go against Kern. It'll be his second. So seventh team foul means free throw opportunity now for Burnett. As Jaleel, Jameel Brown will check in for Penn State. He just catches the foot right there of Nick Kern and, and trips. That, that's that's an impossible call. No, I mean, because, yes, the contact is making him fall down, but Kern's not. He's just moving his feet, and essentially, Namari Burnett kicks his foot. By rule, that is technically a foul. Yeah. Like, you have to call that a foul. It's just, that's a hard rule. Oh, yeah. And Rasheed Wallace is watching somewhere. <laughs> Apparently it does not lie. Baldwin driving kick. Brown will reset. Inside, Wahab was held. Llewellyn will pick it up, and Wahab will have a one and one. Good recognition there by Penn State of the matchup. Who is Wahab being guarded by Jalen Llewellyn? And Nittany Lions knew exactly where that ball needed to go. Just the miscommunication there. You've got Terrence Williams and Llewellyn kind of unsure of who's taking Puck Johnson. And it ends up being Llewellyn stuck in that post. Empty handed trips on both ends. Just under two to play, first half. Second here in day one of the Big Ten tournament in Minneapolis. Hook it, Cheddar, three ball, short. Cheddar has just been unconscious all year. 54% for three, 59% for the floor, but he's missed a pair. Puff Johnson using his body. Can't finish. So that was good defense on Llewellyn's side, and then a foul. Puff Johnson on the floor was reaching up. Will it be Puff? I don't think so. That dribble drive, I, I thought Puff Johnson drove that to get fouled, not necessarily drip, driving it to score it. He's certainly initiating all that contact with Llewellyn. I'd like him to take one more dribble, jump stop, and just understand that at your size, it's 6'8", and you're going to be at the rim, and you're going to be able to score it over the top of 6'2". Meanwhile, Juwan Howard's going to go a little bit smaller. He'll get his son, Jace Howard, back in there at six foot eight. Cheddar is in there at six foot eight. Man, that's, that is crazy small out there for Michigan. Especially with Wahab still out there at 6'11", nearly 240. Williams takes advantage of the one and one situation. 77% free throw shooter. One of the very few true four-year guys at a program in the modern college world and Juwan Howard was glad that he could get his flowers on senior day on Sunday against Nebraska. He's had a good year shooting. He's been much criticized last season. Didn't shoot the basketball well. Has, has come out and had to, to be more of a playmaker for this offense. If I'm Penn State with, with the size that Michigan has on the floor, I, I am going right to Kudus Wahab. He's got Will Cheddar on him. Let's see what they go with. High pick and roll instead. Baldwin shifting gears. Can't bank it home. Michigan looking to run. With numbers if they hurry. Up ahead. And Burnett was on the sideline. 
It has been a turnover festival for the Wolverines. It's not entirely surprising. I mean, 19 turnovers in the first meeting. This is a team that's last in the conference in turnovers per game. Under a minute to play in this first half. Baldwin, the attack, the kick, Johnson, in and out on the three. Had a good look. Michigan's pick and hole coverage not doing the job there. They're very fortunate that didn't go down. Williams can't finish over the hog, and he goes crouching into the cameraman to five on four the other way. Williams just barely on his feet. Still with numbers, skipping, picks, open for three. This building always hazardous for camera guys. Dennis Rodman famous in this building for just that. But Terrence Williams goes down and slow getting up, but Penn State takes advantage with the Hicks three. Hicks with his fourth three of this first half. Final five seconds. Llewellyn forcing himself to his spot, comes up short, and that'll do it for the first 20 minutes. Penn State ends this first half on a 13 to set and be ready for a second half. Thank you. Thank you. You see, that's, that's great stuff from a Hooper and Sora asking a Hooper and Jawan a question, and he's giving a, exactly a player's coach type of answer. We got to get our best player an easy look at the basket here to get him going. Get him a layup, get him to the free throw line, but every time he comes up a pick and roll, he's seen a double team. There's also a reason that Ace Baldwin was the conference's defensive player of the year. Inside hand finish, nice corkscrew delivery from Burnett to get the scoring start in this second half. Burnett with 11 points. He's kind of picked up the slack that's been left by McDaniel's struggles. So Kern, Hicks, Dunn, Wahab, and Baldwin start this second half as well. Great feet. Oh, better recovery and a jump ball. Reed got a piece of it. It'll stay with Penn State. And Will Cheddar can't just leave because Terrace Reed is handling everything with the ball screen, and, the, and it's an incredible recovery there. Well, Hobb a little bit slow to get into the rim, but, but Will Cheddar, you, you can't just leave your man out to dry. Now it's Wahab against Reed one-on-one. -on -one. Wahab can't move him, can't force it in either. You get him going to that left hand, that's, that's a victory for Michigan. Daniel Reed, Cheddar, Burnett, and Williams the five for the Wolverines. Burnett lost it off the foot of Hicks and out of bounds. So Kern and Baldwin, the two that came over from VCU. You had Dunn and Johnson, the two that came over from UNC. Wahab coming over from Georgetown. Raekwondis Mitchell from Kansas City. O'Boyle from Lafayette. All of the transfers, nine transfers and a freshman. McDaniel all alone. There's the easy one. Nylon from distance. Jawan Howard giving him a high five, but just a simple little pin down play. They bring him to that backside, and now you can see the, the defensive energy energized for Doug McDaniel. And a travel. Dunn turns it over. We've seen Michigan struggle in so many second halves, but this is a great start here to this half. Double pin down action. You get the second one for McDaniel flying off. And that, that's like a boulder lifted off his shoulders there. You can see it. Juwan Howard loving it, and, and we'll see if they go right back to him here. Again, you see that former player energy from Howard and kind of knows how to get guys going as a result. But Daniel, too good of a score, too good of a player to be held down the entire game. Here he is with a mismatch on Wahab. I mean, someone's open. It's Reed inside, and he's fouled. Johnson reached in, and he will pick it up. McDaniel, I, I think he's cramping. He's kind of rubbing his calf and was just stretching out on the floor. Those aren't not impossible, I should say, to play through, but they certainly aren't comfortable. And they, they don't normally like, get better unless right. they're getting fluids or, or electrolytes. Maybe some prime. <laughs> <laughs> The gator lights is what he needs. <laughs> That's a good point. Or the right stuff. That's the, the NBA secret sauce there. Is that similar to Michael's secret stuff? <laughs> really? Yeah, hangover cure. And just like that, Michigan has knocked down three shots to start this second half. A 7 nothing run to bring it to four. And Baldwin silences it right away. The main basket. Ace Baldwin is bringing it. He gets in the open floor, gets a ball screen, and he is all the way to the basket. 
Michigan finding some offense. And this is the start that Juwan Howard was hoping for in the first half. McDaniel slips to the rim for two. That's one way for McDaniel to handle that trap that's coming on every pick and roll he's seeing. Just blow right by it. It's not good enough for Penn State, but well done by McDaniel getting downhill. Baldwin rattles home the three. How good is he been? Last five games, averaging 15-4 and almost 10 assists, and shooting 39% from three. And now got a battle between the point guards. McDaniel bounce, Cheddar jumper, good. Good short roll right there. But then that's the recognition by Cheddar that there's going to be a hard edge, and Doug McDaniel willing to give it up to him. And this is the one thing you could absolutely say about Michigan all year. Despite the struggles, they have battled every single night. A foul inside as Hicks got sandwiched between Reed and Cheddar. And if it's Reed, it's number three. Somebody's got to stop the basketball. And Doug McDaniel getting his offense going. Still playing that ball screen. The traps are going to be there. You go under on Baldwin. He's been shooting it so well. He's just stepping back and drilling. So now three personal fouls on Terry Jr. And a nice slip to the bucket by Kern. That's just got to be talked out. That is way too easy. It's definitely a breakdown in Michigan's defense. But if you're not going to communicate, it, it's simple to give up layups on those under out of bounds plays. Penn State has now made three in a row. Inside touch, Reed banging bodies for two. Right over the top of Wahab. Very Kudus Wahab there. Terrace Reed is going to have to stay in this game. He cannot pick up foul number four. Baldwin steps back. Reed stays with him. Now the switch back. McDaniel. Wahab against Cheddar. They like the matchup. And there's a foul. Williams came over on the help. So Williams will pick up his first and send Wahab to the free throw line. Michigan switching five ways there. And Penn State doing a nice job of recognizing the Kudus Wahab at Will Cheddar. We've seen Wahab end up getting back to his left hand a couple times tonight. Here with the up and under. Have to take that foul, otherwise that's going to be a layup. So Wahab, 63% from the floor, led the team. So efficient year for him. 71% at the free throw line. It's his most efficient season of his now long college career at 63% from the floor. From Georgetown, 19 to 21, Maryland in the 21-22 season, back to Georgetown last year. So I've mentioned the experience. Started 88 games in his first four years. 32nd start here tonight. Got to get it across, and McDaniel will do so just in time. Harris Reed Jr. is calling out some of the set. Now Cheddar will come to give McDaniel the screen. Ten to shoot for Williams. Back to McDaniel against Kern. McDaniel, shimmy shake, drive. Tough one, and Reed can't follow it up. Reed sticks with a play, ripped away by Hicks. The Penn State's fortunate because that was a wild effort by Wahab to, to block that shot, and Reed had a good look at the offensive ball. Oh, Hicks can't miss! Five of seven from three-point territory for Zach Hicks. Just 33% on the season, and he is feeling it tonight. McDaniel has it blocked by Johnson. Burnett there to recover. Burnett, double. McDaniel, open. Can't respond. Penn State fortunate because Puff Johnson just went on a road double team and left his man. Now they get it in. Puff against McDaniel. Wants the clear out. Double team comes. McDaniel is going to pick up his third. So now McDaniel and Reed each with three personal fouls and Penn State back up 10. Boy, Zach Hicks has just been tremendous here in Minneapolis, flying off this dribble handoff. Started the second half, six of 10 shooting. They have missed their last four. Penn State has picked it up. They're four of six. They've made four in a row. And now another bump and whistle as Williams will pick up his second for Michigan. And foul trouble is certainly starting to build for the Michigan Wolverines. You've got Reed with three, McDaniel with three, Williams now with two. And already four team fouls, just five minutes into the second half. Wahab, outside Kern. 
Winner here takes on Indiana tomorrow. Winner of that matchup has Nebraska on Friday. Step back, Hicks. He just is absolutely scorching hot right now. Well, it's amazing how when you, you see that ball go through the hoop a couple times from three, now that pull-up's got confidence. He looks like a different player than what we've seen the last three games. Well, that circles around. Bounce it inside for Reed. One-on-one -on -one with Rahab. 12 to shoot. Reed spins towards the baseline. He got bumped before the shot. So the foul on the floor will go against Wahab. That'll be his second. Chase Howard will come back in for second half minutes for Howard. Cheddar will sit. O'Boyle back on the floor for Penn State. And he will replace Wahab. So Mike Rhodes sees Jawan Howard go with a little bit more of a small ball type lineup. Although Reed stays out there. So they're going to go bigger. And instead, Who Penn State. That matchup right now. Yeah, Penn State is now going to go with a smaller lineup. And see what desire style of play will win out. That ball was tipped. Reed's going to have to go all the way back to try to shield a great hustle by Hicks. He's doing everything right now, but it'll stay with Michigan. And Terrence Williams running interference, and it's a good thing he did, because if he didn't kind of change his path, Zach Hicks might have gotten to it. There you see it there. But you love the effort. I mean, he steps on that end line, but it was close. We're going to have to hurry anyway. Four on the shot clock. Williams, as he see it, he does, puts it up, and in! End of the clock, Williams bails him out. That was contested. You had multiple defenders flying around. Big time shot from Terrence Williams. Williams now in double figures, 10 points. Burnett with 11 kicks. Not this time, he's human. I want to guard him though. Michigan not handling that little screen. Around for Burnett, who really set the tone offensively for Michigan. McDaniel had zero points at the half. He's got five so far in this second half. Reed against O'Boyle. Who wants to go to work? Double. Reed forced it up and gets the roll. One-on-one -on -one coverage. He is going to score it on the O'Boyle. All Penn State did there was a little dig. Not to think that Mike Rhodes is going to want to send the double team in. Get him some help. Reed rules inside. Turn on the ball reversal. It's funny because normally the O'Doyle family rules as well. That's true. Hicks. Five to shoot. Kern doubled. Excellent help by Howard. Kern can't hit. And Michigan does get the stop. It's back to an eight-point game. Still plenty of time here for Juwan Howard's team. And a foul on O'Doyle. It's Reed's kingdom in the paint. Michigan recognizing that they've got this mismatch here. There's the current dig, but it's not a full-on double to get that out of the post. And Leo Boyle is just not bringing enough weight to be able to handle what Terrace Reed is bringing. So Mike Rhodes will make the change. Wahab back in. O'Boyle sits. Now Hicks will go to the bench. And Jamil Brown will be out there. Brown, Baldwin, Johnson, Wahab, and Kern against McDaniel, Burnett, Reed, Williams, and Howard. In for Reed. Attacks. Oh, great drive, but he just missed the finish. Everything but the basket. Got to the body of Wahab, sent him back, and, and got a great look at the front of the rim. Bob for the corner. Johnson. Puts the head down, can't get the bucket. Wahab keeps it alive, can't track it down. The aggressiveness, though, by Puff Johnson driving it looks much different than what we saw earlier in this season. Here's the redrive. It's a really nice play, but it's the ones that you need. And Michigan, missed opportunity there for Terrace Reed. Michigan in its illustrious history. Three Big Ten titles in the tournament. One in 98, which later vacated, and two back to back at 17 and 18. And when you make shots like that, you can make runs in tournaments. Terrence Williams, the second, another one with nothing but the bottom. Six straight points for the Wolverines. Penn State worried about his ability to shoot from three. They run him off the line, and even though there's another defender there to meet him, that pull up is pure. Here's Baldwin, the shimmy shake, whip it inside, Johnson got it, and one! 
That is a big time find from Ace Baldwin there. Looks like you had a pretty good crowd with Kudis Wahab posting up in the middle of the floor. But what a pass right here. You lose track of Buff Johnson. He's back cutting you. He's at the rim. And that's a big one because that's Terrace Reed's fourth foul. Adventure and of course that bottom one, Duquesne and Dayton. So most of the, the chalk seeds aside from the one up top got through. Meanwhile, Terrace Reed Jr. now on the bench for the four personal fouls. He has been massive in this game to keep Michigan in it. And really battled with Kudus Wahab among anything else. Well, Jawan Howard is going to have to really manage this. I think that if there's any feeling that this game's getting away, you go back to him. 11-31 in your season. What do you have to lose? The biggest issue is depth. Depth of position. You've got Yusuf Kayad, who's 6'9", 215. Trey Jackson, 6'10", but he's only 215. That's the thing. In this league, we're, we're in, in, Kudus Wahab is not the most physically imposing center that we have in the Big Ten. But you are running the risk, especially with Reed's propensity to get in foul trouble. You just don't have bodies that, that can play behind it. Oh, Williams is taking over. A chance for three. And he's done it. Off the bounce and, and in the mid-range here. Terrence Williams playing pick and roll and, and just keeping Jameel Brown on his back. Brown leaving his feet and must have gotten a piece of that elbow as he elevates here for the pull-up. So Williams doing what he can to put his team on his back. Again, the only four-year legitimate guy in this rotation that's been at Michigan for all four. And now he has brought his team back to within six. He's up to 15 points. He's got seven of the last nine for the Wolverines. And now Mike Rose will match. We'll get O'Boyle in there, match him up with Cheddar. Baldwin trapped right away in the backcourt. Gets rid of it for Kern. Good retrap, and now Johnson gets it across. He's got numbers. Euros can't finish. O'Boyle flying in is foul. It's something simple, but Nick Kern, just a little look off there. He makes eye contact with Ace Baldwin, and with Puff Johnson flashing to the middle of that press, he looks the defense off, and now you are off to the races with an advantage. Honestly, I, I thought that Puff Johnson maybe got bumped there, and it could have been a foul. But Penn State will keep the ball. Call it on the floor, loose ball foul. Reversal, Baldwin on Howard, tough one, not that time. And a good box out by McDaniel. Coach in the midway point of this second half, it's a two possession game. Williams, back to McDaniel, talk about the lack of depth. A big part of that is Olivier Kamwa not being available. 14.8 points per game at 6'9", 235, out with a wrist injury. Back down, Cheddar on O'Boyle, and he forced the turnover. You've got Will Cheddar playing in the post here. And yeah, you see that that pivot foot just picks up and definitely was a travel. O'Boyle feeling it after <laughs> forcing the turnover. Emphatic. First turnover of the second half for Michigan. That was the area they mightily struggled with the first 20 minutes. Baldwin. Slippery. Hooks it. Too far in front of Kern and a turn it right back. 10.07 to play. Michigan, despite shooting below 40% for the game, despite the abundance of turnovers, 12 total. Despite giving up 40, 50, 80 splits to Penn State, he's down by just six. And McDaniel makes it four. And on top of that, Noah, the foul trouble. You've got Terrace Reed with four. McDaniel's got three. And this Michigan team, give them credit that they have just hung in there tonight. And this is a microcosm for their season. Jawan Howard knows that it has not gone well. 8-23. But the way that they have come prepared every single day has been much to his delight as Baldwin will go to the free throw line. Cheddar was going to pick up another foul. It'll be his third. 
It's all about getting to the rim. Just a little stop and go. McDaniel playing some possum there, and then he is right by you. And you have to assume that the ace ball, when he sees Bill Cheddar here taking him off the pick and roll, he's looking to go to the rim. Seeking out the contact. Baldwin. Talk about that building block aspect of what he means to laying the foundation for Mike Rhodes. Obviously familiar with the system, which goes a long way as Wahab checks back in for Penn State. But more than anything, it's it's the fire in which he plays with. It's the energy he brings to practice every single day. And then obviously the competitive spirit and nature that he has night in and night out on the actual court. I'd love to see him in practice. I would just think if you're trying to work on your offense, he's like one of those D-line that blows everything out. <laughs> Thousand percent. This is going to be a jump ball, and it'll stay with Michigan. For more on Ace, let's go to Zora. Well, guys, Ace Baldwin Jr. told me his relationship with head coach Mike Rhodes is so much bigger than basketball. He calls coach a father figure. Baldwin Jr.'s dad got sick while he was in high school. Rhodes and the rest of the VCU coaching staff at the time called and checked on Baldwin Jr. every day. When his dad eventually passed, all the coaches were at the funeral. So when Rhodes took the job at Penn State, Baldwin Jr. knew he wanted to play for the coach that was always there to support him. And, and that's such a huge factor. I mean, you guys both know it, of eventually deciding where you want to play college. When you're highly touted, and Robbie, you certainly were a highly touted high school recruit, that relationship makes all the difference. It's how it's going to have to force comes up short and Baldwin's right there and, and you're going to college as a kid and you're leaving as an adult and, and that's such a big part of your experience as a student athlete speaking of Baldwin is fouled again fearless on his way to the paint I like the fact that Ace Baldwin is not settling for jumpers and he is looking to get all the way downhill and Mari Burnett has got to make him use that ball screen you get turned down Look at just the void of help there. Chase Howard having to come over, but it's months too late, and Baldwin earning a trip to the foul line. Similar to what we were talking about with Long and Willard, and the fact that he followed him from Seton Hall to Maryland. Same deal. Baldwin comes from VCU, as does Nick Kern, but a guy to essentially run the offense and help set the tone in terms of what he brings to the system and help teach that system, be an extension of Mike Rhodes on the floor. It's invaluable and the trust they have in one another is evident anytime you watch a game. Seven point ball game after splitting a pair, Baldwin's up to 14, that one was tipped. So McDaniel goes back to get it. That could have been the coffin corner right there. Michigan's forged it, that wasn't a trap. McDaniel, oh, it's stripped. Baldwin has such quick hands. Raquandis Mitchell is going to check in for Kern. Michigan will keep it. It's when he's behind you. I mean, he's behind the play, and, and he just always has a hand on the ball. He makes it look so simple. No, that is so totally. hard. It, it really is. And I whistle before any of that. It'll be a kick ball. So they'll Reset the shot clock to 20. But he's got a great understanding of guys that most players are rocking that, that ball back and forth to gather momentum before they go up to shoot. And a travel on Williams. 13th turnover of the night for the Wolverines. And it's felt like every time they've gotten close, They've taken two steps forward, yeah, and then they take another one turnover, or two back. They've given up a couple buckets. They've hung in, but they, they haven't been able to break that seven or eight point seal. Around the horn, little matchup zone action from Michigan. Hicks, swing it, O'Boyle, and a foul inside. Cheddar was locked up with Wahab. And it's going to be Cheddar. That's going to be number four. So now Reed and Cheddar each with four personal fouls. Need to up your streaming game? Check out fan favorite Peacock original series like The Traders, a celebrity murder mystery competition full of thrills of deception, Poker Face from the writer director of Knives Out, and Twisted Metal from the minds behind Deadpool and Zombieland. They're all streaming exclusively on Peacock. Meanwhile, Wahab back to the free throw line. Michigan with 19 fouls already. And Wahab will get one more. 
Terrace Reed back in that ball game. He got to stay on the floor. He mounted. Nice trip for Wahab. He's having himself a, a solid game. Ten points and four boards. And Mike Rhodes, I'm thinking, how can we go at Terrace Reed to get him out of this ball game? Get it to McDaniel. Had a quick start to the second half. Just seven points now overall. Bounce it. Williams has really been the go-to guy. Inside Reed. Dangerously swinging those shoulders for a bucket. And talk about physicality. He's knocking Kudus Wahab right back. He's starting to toe that line of a little more aggressive, and you're running the risk of an offensive foul. Baldwin on the hesitation. Skip it. O'Boyle off the fake. Nice feed inside on the entry, and Wahab cashes in. A big time position there, but great recognition by O'Boyle, who's driving that closeout. He's got Wahab and Terrace Reed doing his best to not foul. Has to just give up that jump hook. McDaniel surveys. Mitchell steps in front. Around it goes to Burnett. Rip through, kick out. Howard walks the tightrope. Hano Boyle missed it. Baldwin to Hicks, sets the feet. Not that time. And then off of O'Boyle, out of bounds. It just feels like every time it leaves Hicks' hands right now, it's going down, but Michigan breathes a sigh of relief. Well, Penn State is clearly going to attack Terrace Reed. Nice pass sitting here by Leo O'Boyle and Kudus Wahab getting to his bread and butter. In six assists. It's been about him getting downhill and living at the rim here. Every time Penn State has needed an answer, he's been one of the Nittany Lions that has come through for him. You always know he's bringing it defensively. We can also step back and drill it from three. It's Baldwin, the third team All Big Ten selection. He's put that show on tonight and brought his deal here to Minneapolis. Well, Michigan's offense picked up in this second half. They're 12 of 19, now 12 of 20 from the floor after that last miss. But they've done a great job offensively of finding that rhythm that they needed. It's been the fact that they haven't strung enough stops together once they've gotten it close. And now find themselves down by nine. Still just under seven to play. McDaniel will stay out there as will Reed. Reed with four personal fouls on the floor. Burnett, Howard, and Williams will round out the five. Hook it on the short roll, Reed. Half the shot clock gone. McDaniel is just getting locked up by ball. Just blowing that up. Burnett had it knocked away by a foul on Wahab. So he will pick up number three. That's the fifth team foul on the Nittany Lions. They're getting deep in that shot clock. Kudus Wahab, a little bit undisciplined there with the reach in. You just got to be solid here. Have high hands. That's bailing Michigan's offense out. As Penn State defensive attack on Doug McDaniel has been excellent so far. McDaniel 3 of 12 from the floor to 7 points. Reed going right at Wahab. Lost it on the way up. Got it right back. Little Moses Malone. And he'll earn himself a trip to the strike. Remember, Noah, Doug McDaniel in the only meeting in the regular season, only 11 points, 4 of 7 from the field, whereas Baldwin went for 25. So Baldwin won that first meeting. Here's Terrace Reed. Getting a good look the first time, staying with it, and, and that should have been a three-point play. I'm sure that that's exactly what he's thinking as well. Not a super loud performance from Reed, but effective at that, especially considering the foul trouble. Michigan now seven, eight at the free throw line. And I'll, I'll take that one. I'll accept it. That's the announcer jinx. I, I never <laughs> believed in it. And then there was just such an overwhelming just wave that it was real that kept happening to me that I had so to now start. You feel that it might be. I feel bad when it happens, you know. I do have remorse when it happens. Of course. Wahab now working on Howard. They'll keep Reed away. Try to keep him in the game. Two on the shot clock. Hicks has the fire. Oh, he fills it up. Zach Hicks, money all night. 
It's just one of those deals where it is Zach Hicks night here tonight. He got that rhythm dribble though. Terrence Williams looking to not foul, but just a big time individual play. Power can't respond. Wahab corrals the board. New season high for Hicks with a 20 points. Can they feed him again? He's six of 10 from three. Baldwin will try. Short. And the rebound fought for between the same team. Reed eventually clears. Baldwin on the step curve. He thought he'd line that one up, and he was running back. Nathaniel, leave it. Reed, oh, who's there? And if it's a foul, it is. Reed is done. He hits the quota, his fifth. Baldwin will go to the free throw line to shoot two. And that could be the last we see of Terrence Reed Jr. on the season. His anticipation is just next level stuff. I mean, he, he reads that the whole way. Now, there wasn't a ton of contact there for Terrace Reed, it didn't seem like. If anything, it looked like maybe he had knocked it out of bounds. But instead, the foul is called. Baldwin shoots two. Reed is done for the rest of this one with 5 1 remaining. So we're going to see what Juwan Howard elects to go with in terms of size. Let's take another look at this one, another angle here. So Reed gets his pocket picked from behind. Maybe there's a slight grab of the shoulder, but when he goes to the floor, he, he's getting ball. So Reed, in his sophomore year, 9.7 rebounds per game, a block and a half here tonight. Limited with a foul trouble, 12, 12 points. They got to cross. They did. That's 10 points. That's, oh, a foul is called. They whistled the foul on Puff Johnson right as the 10 was about to be whistled. Wow. I mean, let's look at how everyone is just running away from Burnett. And finally, Cheddar recognizes it here. Wow. Man, that is. It is fortunate for Michigan that they're bailed out by the foul. So Howard to the free throw line. Just his seventh and eighth attempts of the season. 4.51 to play. He can make it a 10-point game here. Michigan has played well in the second half. It's all even at 28 at the moment. And they now lead 29-28 in the second half. They've strung together offense. But can they find the defense when they need it the most? On the season, Michigan has a scoring margin of minus 5.9. They're the only team in the Big Ten that, that has a worse scoring margin than minus 1.3. And the problem is they're in the double bonus as our Penn State in the double bonus. Double penalty for Michigan, and they continue to foul. This one gonna go against Chase Howard. You can just see the, the connection that Kern and Baldwin have. He, Baldwin's always looking for him as a cutter, and, and Kern knows exactly when the time is to do it. I mean, the free throw numbers are astounding right now. Penn State's 19 of 24 at the line. Michigan's 9 for 11. They've got 20 of 25. So that's a 14 free throw difference just in attempts and an 11 free throw make difference so far in an, a 12-point game. Another Michigan turnover. That's their 15th. Well, that's been the main difference in this game. No, it totally has. This is just like the first meeting. This is in the first half. 19 turnovers for Michigan in that game at the Palestra. 13 on the shot clock. Baldwin directing traffic. Lob it. Wahab. Double. Swing it. Nobody home. <laughs> Mike Rhodes is. That was a nice catch, too. Oh, the short half. D3 National Championship as a player. Still still got it a little bit. Right, this feels like time for Doug McDaniel 
to potentially take over offensively. Williams, here comes the double. Baldwin was there. Williams finds some space. Kick at the roll, but he'll shoot two. 3.50 to play. Final State has had an answer. They've just kind of had the stiff arm going. We'll see that the Wolverines have one more in them with Terrace Reed. This game in foul trouble. Will Cheddar in some serious foul trouble with four as well. Reed fouled out a couple moments ago. Cheddar with four is going to stay out there, and Williams misses a critical free throw. So Cheddar, Howard, Williams, McDaniel, and Burnett for Jawan Howard. And Baldwin, Kern, Hicks, Wahab, and Johnson for Mike Rhodes. And a tough, empty-handed trip for Terrence Williams the second. A 76% foul shooter. That's shocking to see him miss those. Keeps it at a 12-point game. Baldwin bounce it. Wahab just couldn't handle it. Out of bounds. Off the ball screen. He's out of there on the roll, and if he catches it, it's a layup. See Michigan just not communicating there. They're, they're in that zone, but nobody taking the roll, man. They are so lucky that that's not caught. We have not seen Jalen Llewellyn in the second half. He had some solid plays in the first 20 minutes of action. It's been all McDaniel and Burnett in the backcourt. Burnett can't stick that one. Howard, the offensive rebound. Aggressive on the way back up. It rolls out. McDaniel tracks it down. Another chance. Burnett. Hesitated just for a second. That's where Williams is dominated, but he can't hit that mid-range. How many good chances right there. That's the rim, open jumper. There's nothing doing for the Wolverines. Well, Penn State has scored 80 or more 11 times this season. They're not going to get to that, but their offense has come up with opportunistic buckets. Not that time. Here's a transition opportunity, and wow. Williams just couldn't get control to find McDaniel. Hicks got back in time and will allow his defense to set. I mean, you've got another pick and roll where Wahab is just wide open at the rim. Penn State comes away empty handed, and then this is two on one basketball and another missed opportunity for the Wolverines. Lob it up. Howard wasn't there. Johnson looking to track it down. Howard gets to it first, and he's fouled. Johnson frustrated. That's going to be his fourth. We'll send Howard to the free throw line. Think that they'll clip these last four possessions for the uh, for Massachusetts <laughs> in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's not been pretty. Springfield, here we come. Yeah, do you want to play the music? Hit the music. <laughs> so Howard will shoot one and one. Buff Johnson certainly been hustling. Hasn't put up the numbers that he did in their regular season finale, the win over Maryland, where he finished with 13 points. Another missed free throw, but offensive rebound Cheddar inside Howard, and he can't finish. Second layup, he's missing as many possessions. Howard gets a hand on that one. Popped up in the air. Hicks claims it. Numbers if he hurries the other way. What, what, is, what is happening? <laughs> like, what is going on? Kern to the rip through. Bounce it. Wahab lost it. But he's fouled. And Cheddar just fouled out. So Cheddar will go back to the sideline. Jawan Howard looking for somebody, and it'll be Trey Jackson. I, I, yeah, uh, to answer your question, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I do know that it is nearly 10 o'clock local it, it here in Minneapolis. It's and it's true. It's final game of day one of the Big Ten tournament, and there's still a lot of basketball to be played the rest of this week. And one thing I do know is if Penn State holds on to this lead, which as of now it looks like they're in prime position to do, they'll take on Indiana tomorrow night. Cheddar and Reed both foul out for the Wolverines. Wahab splits a pair.
McDaniel draws Hicks. And now calls for the screen. She can't find any space out there. Burnett, baseline drive. Fades off one leg, short. A good help defense, though. Burnett's driving that baseline. The help defender's coming over, stops the ball, and you'll live with an Amari Burnett fadeaway all day. Curran leaves it, 13 to shoot. Conference defensive player of the year with the ball in his hands. Leave it, Hicks, not again. Too strong. And Kern will allow for Baldwin to drain some more clock. He's fouled on the outside. Burnett will send him to the free throw line. Allows for Mitchell and O'Boyle to come back in. And Baldwin to pad his numbers. 15 points, five rebounds, six assists, and some critical defensive plays. Baldwin averaged 2.71 steals per game this year. Big Ten basketball is brought to you by TikTok. So Boyle, Raquandis Mitchell, and DeMarco Dunn will all check in. Now Jamil Brown will hop off and head to the scores table. Let's see if he'll replace Baldwin, the shooter, who has mentioned 2.71 steals, most by a Big Ten player in a single season since Pat Baldwin at Northwestern in 1993. Wow. Average 2.9 steals per game, which is almost impossible to do. But Baldwin will go to, to the bench. He has done his part in earning his team another day on the season. Well, he was hanging around that 2.9 mark, I feel like, even up until about a couple weeks ago. When and then Zach Hicks, he, he certainly was a problem in terms of Indiana guarding him with, with Malik Renew. Renew had a big game in State College as well. But Penn State's had the Hoosiers number. It's going to be a really interesting game. Jawan Howard clears the bench. Hochberg out there leaves it for George Washington the third. And he's bumped on the outside by DeMarco Dunn. So Washington with a chance to get some points on the board. Ian Burns, Cooper Smith, and Jackson Selvala all getting some run. Now Mike Rhodes will go deep in his bench. Dan Conlon set to check in, the transfer from Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. That's presidential from Washington. Oh, Boyle will sit. So Cheddar and Reed both fell out of this game for Michigan. McDaniel struggles mightily, seven points on three of 12 shooting. But Williams and Burnett combined for 26 to keep the team in it. They played well in this second half. Penn State made just enough plays. Conlin, not shy. No, oh, not at all. I respect it, though. Get the game, get one up. And Washington will get more free throws. 32.6 left. That is important because it's still a 2.6 difference. Opportunity, right? You've got Conlin, you've got Braji Goodmanson, the freshman from Iceland out there. Guys who don't necessarily get a ton of run, a ton of burn. And Washington can add a couple more points for his freshman season. Athletic. Certainly around the rim, good rebounder at his size, 6'2", and they believe he could be a good developmental piece moving forward at Ann Arbor. Now, Andy Christos will check in for the Nittany Lions and replace Jamil Brown for this final 32.6. So the 2.6 second difference, shot clock to game clock. We'll see if Penn State gets another shot up. Mitchell. Looks like they're gonna run a set. Goodmanson, guarded by Washington, cut off, Conlon, swing it, extra Goodmanson, leave it inside, knocked away, he was looking for Christos on the other end, well short from Hochberg, 
taken right back to Vala. Puts it in with 1.9. Former team manager with a big bucket in the Big Ten tournament. Good for him. But not enough. And Penn State, for the fourth consecutive year, wins at least a game in the Big Ten tournament. They can shoot a bit. Yo, welcome to the streets where the hustle never sleeps. Concrete jungle where every corner's got secrets to keep. From the neon lights to the graffiti on the wall. This is the life we live where we stand tall in the heart of the city where dreams collide. We navigate the alleys with swagger and pride. From the buskers on the corner to the vendors in the stalls. This is the rhythm of the streets where the wild calls. Street life where the beats never stop. From dusk till dawn, we're on top. In the chaos and the noise, we find our groove. This is the street life. This is how we move. From the skaters on the sidewalk to the b-boys in the square This is where we come alive, where we show we care With every step we take, we leave our mark In the tapestry of the streets, where we embark From the stoop conversations to the midnight races This is the life we live in all its different faces In the rhythm of the streets, we find our flow This is the street life, where we let it all go Never stop from dusk till dawn. We're on top in the chaos and the noise. We find our groove. This is the street life. This is how we move.